All right, Donald Trump's win today having a powerful effect on the stock market. The Dow surging by more than 1,300 points. Let's get right to someone in the business of business, Anthony Scaramucci. He was Trump's White House communications director for a very short time. He is the founder and managing partner of Skybridge Capital. Anthony, thanks so much for being with us. I know it's been a long night for you. What do you think the Trump victory means? If you could boil it down to 20 seconds, what does it mean? What does it mean the most quickly for the American people? Great for my portfolio, but I'm sort of sad for the country. John, it's a good thing I don't drink. I would have emptied the liquor cabinet behind me. You know, I, I just think it's a it's a sad day for a lot of people. You know, they they talk about non-white immigrants to the United States in a very us versus them dehumanizing sort of a way. And so hopefully he ta when he takes that mantle of leadership again, I hope that he takes a pause and thinks about that, that the country needs to unite and there needs to be a healing process in the country. I congratulate the president and Elon Musk. It was a well-executed campaign. He won the popular vote, John. It's a democracy. And so he's, he's my president, he's your president, and, and I do wish him well, uh, but I'm worried because the rhetoric that he was using in the campaign, if he executes on that rhetoric, it'll be good for some people, but it won't be good for all of America. And that's something that worries me. So you did work in the administration for a brief time, and you were around during the transition a little bit, too. What do people who may end up working in this next Trump administration, and he'll be staffing up soon, what do they need to know based on your so, experience? So just to, just to be clear, and you know, I'm not proud of all this, but I just state all this. I was the first person on Wall Street to move towards Donald yeah. Trump uh, back in 2016, helped him raise a lot of money, spent nine months on the campaign providing media advocacy, and then worked on that transition for the 12 weeks of the transition as an executive committee person. So it wasn't just 11 days in the White House. I worked with him. Uh, but what happens to many people that work with him, if not all the people that work with him, uh, you know, he starts to do things that you are questioning. You're taking an oath to the Constitution. You're taking an oath to serve the American people and the American uh, process, the system, John, not the person. Uh, and when that starts to get into an aggressive combative position with Donald Trump, you either get fired, you resign, or you end up like the 40 of us that tried to warn the American people of what he was like inside the administration. But he's there now. He's going to have a whole, whole new set of people because that's what happens in Trump world. There's a carousel. You come in, you wear the MAGA hat, you smile, you get a knife plunge in your bag on the way out. And, and that's that's what happened to a good many people. Uh, the people that are there now think it's not going to happen to them. Uh, but, you know, and they do say this on Wall Street, past performance is not indicative of the future. Uh, but I think it is in this case. And I would just caution those people. Uh, and I would remind those people that there are rules and a system in place in the United States. And you're taking an oath to the Constitution and the office, not to the person. Anthony Scaramucci, appreciate you taking this short period of time to talk to us. We will speak with you again soon. Got a lot of time to digest there's what happened. There's some tequila here for you. John, there's some tequila here for you in this uh, mini bar in the hotel if you need it. Right? I got hours left to go, my friend, before I do any, any drinking. TV, <laughs> no mercy there. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. More than 1,330 points right now for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Let's bring in Kevin O'Leary, chairman of O'Leary Adventures. Adventures, I guess it's adventures well, at times. Adventures. <laughs> Although we have some adventures. I'm sure you do. I'm sure, of course, Shark Tank fame and all of that. All right, so here we are. I know that you've been a supporter of a number of Trump's economic proposals. Can I just start, though, with where we are this morning? Because I'm sure there were moments last night that you were sort of as shocked as everyone else was that this is how this is really going. Um, what went through your head? And then you start to see the markets surge and that immediate reaction. First market I saw move was Bitcoin, actually, because it trades 24-7. Yeah. We started to see that just after midnight. And by the, way, by the way, Aaron, I just always preface my comments. I don't shill for politicians. I shill for policy. Right. And so I'm looking for pro-business policy. Um, so when I saw Bitcoin moving, a lot of that coming from Asia, those markets and the Middle East, um, those markets were already watching you probably and other outlets that they can feed there deciding this county information is getting interesting and Bitcoin 
was a huge winner. Right. And Trump obviously has been a big supporter of Bitcoin. Well, he's so, also supporting the policy around digital payment systems. So this is going to be a good sector for us. Right. OK. So can I just ask you, and this is the age old question. So I know that you're going to have to caveat it with you don't know the answer for sure. But he says a lot of things. He has said a lot of things. Do you really think he's going to do all these things? Do you really think that he's going to put tariffs in across the board? Or is that a negotiating strategy that he was doing to say something to signal to China? As you know, going through Congress right now is a reciprocal tariff bill, which is very fair. If Germany taxes us or, or tariffs us at 10% on cars, we do the same to right. them. Recip it'll be reciprocal, yeah. with the exception of China. I'm, a, I'm an advocate for turning up the heat on China so that we get them to the table to join that act because they're not, they came into the WTO in 1999. Trump is mm -hmm. using these, people think they're sales taxes, they're not. It's a negotiating tactic. This is what he does well, I would, I would argue. If Hmm. The, the, the supreme leader now knows that Trump is going to run the show. If Trump says, look, I'm going to crank you up to 400 percent until you get over here to Washington, he'll fly to Washington. That's what we need. We need Trump's negotiating tactic, his, his uncertainty that he brings to the table. These adversaries get nervous when they don't understand the direction he's going. OK, so now let me ask you a couple of other uh, important questions. First, let's talk about Elon Musk. Yes. OK, uh, you know him. And he was an instrumental part of this. Right? Yes. He got on board early, instrumental part of it. Okay. So it, it, Trump says he's going to run the Doge. I, I kind of uh, name it after, you know, the, 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 the Doge, right? He used to run Venice back in the day. I don't yeah. know. Okay. Um, the Department of Government Efficiency. Do you think Elon Musk is actually going to come in and do that? Do you think he's capable of doing that in a good way? I mean, is this, again, more rhetoric than reality? No, actually. Um, think about, I used to work for Steve Jobs. I'm going to draw an analogy I think you'd appreciate. Yep. Uh, he was not a nice guy to work for, by the way, but he was 85% signal, 15% noise. The only other entrepreneur that I've ever seen that is more efficient than Jobs is Elon Musk. He's 100% signal, difficult social skills as a result, doesn't matter. Every mandate, Diplomatically put well, I'm, I'm, I'm right, pointing right. out to you that every mandate that he's decided to take on, he's executed on. There's right. no man on earth with executional skills like that. If he says he's going to do it, he'll surround himself with advocates yep. and he'll put them to work as he does. And if you look at his business models, he brings really good talent in and then he comes in and runs the show. Um, he's going to need Trump to back him on this because no agency wants to be downsized. So if they do this, they can find a lot of savings. And do you believe from what you're hearing now, and maybe the fact that Trump looks easily on track to win the popular vote, the fact that this is such a mandate, it wasn't just a narrow eked out victory, right, overall, it wasn't. Does that change the fact, the big worry that people have is who's he going to attract to work for him? After oh, last time, after what the general said, I've after all the I've got good news people, for you, Aaron, on yeah? this one. Howard Ludwig is running the transition team. I've had a chance to speak with him very briefly. A-listers coming in. We're not going to have the same volatility we had on Mandate 1. Trump 2.0 really wants this to work. It's not going to be a rotating doors of guys coming in and writing books the next week about their horrible experience. They're going to find great people to run this, this mandate because this is his legacy mandate. He's going to be good for three years before he's a lame duck. He knows that. I think, think it's he does know that. You think he, he does cares know about that. legacy? You know, being shot at twice kind of sobers you up a little bit. I think that's changed him. He's an older guy now. He's, he's a far more pragmatic guy. I'm an advocate to let him go do his thing and watch him go to work. He cares a lot about the economy, and he's made promises he wants to keep. You get to that point in your life where you want to leave something behind that was a great thing you did. And I think this is going to be yeah. what Trump's focused on. Right. And I, I, I want to say something about the outcome. We corrected ourselves last night. America corrected itself. We were going to a crazy place, and that's what I love about democracy. It fixed itself. We're all better off. And even the Democrats, this was good for them. They're going to get to reboot. This party will be much stronger in 36 months. Yeah, well, it will change. It will change, and obviously could be very much stronger. All right, Kevin, thank you very much.